Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, Blaine Gilmer of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes here. We preview every single football game involving SEC teams every week. Tonight we get to Vanderbilt and Georgia. The Commodores are about 37-point underdogs heading to Athens. And uh, this game will be shown at 3.30 Eastern. That one on the SEC Network. Vanderbilt last week led Ole Miss at halftime. Its defense imploded in the second half, and, and the Commodores end up losing by 24. Georgia just beat the snot out of Auburn um, in a game that got worse as it went. This game last year was was pretty lopsided, and the, uh, the odds makers have, have got it lopsided again for good reason this year, Blaine. Yeah, I mean it's it's a lopsided contest in terms of the the talent on the on the field and and you know in terms of the pedigree of these two teams right now. But you got to give Clark Lee's team a lot of credit. I mean they they like you said up at halftime on a good Ole Miss team uh, caused them some problems early. Let's let's face it, Georgia. Even though it's weird to say because they're the AP number one ranked team in the country, they have not, in my opinion, played that way. The last three weeks, uh, even with the lopsided score against against Auburn, it was quite ugly on their behalf early. So I think like the biggest focus for, you know, these two teams, Vanderbilt will just be trying to finish better, you know, like, you know, as they started well in the old Miss game, but trying to finish the game better and Georgia's looking to start better. So. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, right, Chris, is, uh, I mean, w- with Vanderbilt, we said, you know, what just a, what's a what's a successful season i don't think you're expecting to win at georgia but i think what you want to see here is to play better than you did at in alabama right like coming off of what you had last week against Ole miss um you certainly showed some improvement obviously didn't get the job done but but still you, you you're seeing some of those things start to improve and i think that's that's what we said that's probably a big part of this just development for vanderbilt that's the only way they're going to be able to eventually you know get to where they want to get to um, and I think that's where here you want to see that improvement on the road here in a game where you don't want this to look like it did against Alabama. Now, could it, given how good Georgia can be? Sure. But I think that's what probably you're looking for if you're Clark Lee in terms, in terms of the actual, um, you know, breaking down what this looks like from a matchup standpoint and just kind of, you know, assessing where the program can be uh, moving forward. Well, Vanderbilt has done some good things this year. The special teams play, especially its punting and field goal kicking, have been really good. I believe it's a positive in the turnover margin. Um, A.J. Swan, its quarterback, who's from Georgia, has, has really been good for them. He's very talented. Um, he has thrown eight touchdowns, no picks so far. Vanderbilt's offense putting up some very respectable numbers, averaging – 33.2 points a game. No, 63, that was against Hawaii. Uh, Georgia giving up 10.7 a game. Vanderbilt on rush plays is getting about five yards a carry adjusted for sacks. Pass plays adjusted for sacks, getting about 6.8. Georgia giving up 3.9 and 5.1. And here's the thing that's interesting. Vanderbilt's pass protection has been much better than anybody anticipated. Vandy's only given up five sacks. I think Georgia's only got five, which is kind of astonishing after after last year. But, Blaine, do you see Vandy giving Georgia any trouble? Vanderbilt's moved the ball on everybody this year other than Alabama, and I think that's the concern if you're, if you're wondering if Vandy can move the ball at all is it played a defense of elite athletes like it will see in Georgia against Alabama – it, it just was overmatched in that one. So I'll be interested to see if Vandy can move the ball and score it all on Georgia. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in between the 20s, they'll, they'll probably move the ball a little bit. I mean, even Oregon did so in that game that, that Georgia pounded Oregon in. They, they moved the ball down. It was critical turnovers that, that Georgia is able to force. Georgia, you know, like you said, only five sacks on the year. But here's the thing they're still getting back there and pressuring quarterbacks and affecting the passer. And that's, that's what's causing some of these turnovers that, you know, interceptions, things like that, batted balls that they're able to, to, uh, to force that, that disrupt offenses. And heck, even an Auburn player, uh, I think it was Brandon Council, the center for Auburn last week said, if we can keep Georgia out of their third down packages, we ought to be able to be good. You know, well, 
easier said than done, right? Their third down mm-hmm. packages on on defense. So, um, yeah, I think you know Ramon Davis, good running back, is gonna is gonna be somebody that that they try to test Georgia with because there's been a couple teams that have been able to to get some running going on Georgia. But overall, I think Georgia will will stifle Vandy pretty good uh, defensively. I think it's that pressure Blaine talked about. I think that's something, and we said, I mean, you still got a, a young quarterback in Swan who clearly has the tools, but it's just this is a, a road matchup against a team like this. And I just think with, with the pressure, those kind of things, the disruption, I feel like is what we always talk about with George. I feel like that's probably the key here uh, for them defensively against this Vanderbilt offense. Okay, before we talk about the other side matchup, we got some big games coming this week to add some extra excitement. We went ahead and are making some predictions in the Stakes app. That is S-T-A-K-E-S. We want to hear from you guys. If you agree or disagree, go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Sign up for Stakes. Place your prediction whether you are for or against our picks. If you use the invite code Southeastern14, when you sign up, you'll get a double welcome bonus. Lots of fun. You can win stuff. Free to sign up, free to place bets, never cost you a penny. What's not to like? Come join in the fun at stakes. Okay, when Georgia's got the ball, Stetson Bennett was mentioned as a Heisman contender early in the year. That's probably not going to happen, uh, but Georgia just has been so good in, in terms of being able to have a multifaceted running attack. Georgia scoring 39.6 a game. Vanderbilt giving up 36.8. Adjusted for sacks. When Georgia throws the ball, it is giving getting 8.3 per play. Vanderbilt giving up 8.5. And, and just its pass defense is about the worst in the country right now. Georgia averaging 6.1 yards a run adjusted for sacks. Vanderbilt giving 5.0. Vanderbilt has given up, what is it, 45 and then over to, to Wake and over 50 to both Alabama and Ole Miss. I think Georgia just scores at will in this one, Blaine. Yeah, when it, when it comes down to it, Georgia has been battling a few injuries. They're looking to get some uh, receivers healthy, A.D. Mitchell being one of them in particular. Their they're guy that came into the year as their number one receiver, they're expecting him to, to be back and play in this game. And uh, even Lad McConkey, who's been playing, he's been battling some injuries and – you know, Stetson Bennett has been rumored to be, you know, they won't come out and say directly, but on the, the broadcast, the the Rick Neuheisel and company kept saying, oh, look at Bennett. He keeps warming up on the sideline. Is there a shoulder issue? Stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think that, that they'll get right in this in this game and uh, be able to, to light up the scoreboard a little bit because, as you said, Bandy's defense has had some some problems, you know, passing pass defense-wise, but – uh, Georgia has had its own problems in the passing game in terms of efficiency last two games. So Blake, uh, they'll be you know they'll be looking to kind of uh, get that get that corrected early on in this game. Yep, and I think they know that's that's going to be key, obviously, to their long term, um, you know, success and potential of defending their national championship. So that will be something that for sure will be a focus. And, and Chris, we talked about it. Just I think the Vanderbilt defense. This season, um, clearly not where Clark Lee wants it to be just yet, and and I don't think that's something that gets fixed this this season. Um, so I think that's still a a long term thing. So yeah, if you're just looking at the matchup, I think Georgia can probably do pretty much anything it wants offensively. And if you are Georgia, you just want to kind of see that that passing game get a little more crisp. And I, I think the opportunities will be there against this Vanderbilt defense. Yeah, just an athletic mismatch in this one. The line is 37. The over-under is 58. That implies a final score of 48 to 11. I think Georgia probably scores more than 48. Vanderbilt might score a few, but Georgia's probably going to get low to mid-50s in this one. I, I think I like the I think I like the over, and I think – excuse me, and I think I like Georgia. What about you guys? Yeah, uh, if – I'll say this: that I, these big numbers in terms of covering, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not betting myself, uh, and we're not like we always like to say we're not professional betters, but uh, professional gamblers or anything. But I like that number as long as Georgia plays clean. They've turned the ball over a lot the last three weeks. Georgia plays clean; they'll cover that number because, like you said, Chris, it is a uh, you know it's athletic mismatch. Blake, uh, 
you basically, I guess the question is, do you like the over under? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. I think it's what Chris brought up. It's in terms of probably how much does Georgia score here. I also think it's probably a lot. Um, so I, I, I agree. I think it's the over is probably the better bet here maybe. And, um, but I still think even that number, cause what, I mean, we said that against Auburn, right? We were like 30 was a lot or whatever the number was. And, um, I just think, you know, I still think Auburn's probably better than Vanderbilt. So, um, I just think, yeah, I g- give me exactly what Chris said. I'll, I'll go with him on this one. So. All right. Thanks for watching. We are previewing every single sec football game this season. We are doing a Wednesday night live show where we'll update our picks as injuries and weather and other things happen that may change the outlook for the game. So be sure to watch that. The best way to get all that is to hit that subscribe button. So please do that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon at Southeastern 14.